In previous video episodes, we've tested Amazon Basics as well as SuperTech, and both motor oils performed very well. The question is, can you save even more money with the new Kirtland Signature motor oil that Costco just began selling? This is a great price at $24.99 for 10 quarts. The same amount of oil at Walmart, the SuperTech brand would cost you about $35, so you could save about $10 on 10 quarts. With such an amazing price, can you actually trust the motor oil? Today, I'm gonna do some local testing as well as send off this oil to an oil testing lab and we're gonna get a really good idea as whether or not this oil is worth the money. In the first test, we'll see which oil is best at resisting thermal breakdown and evaporation. We'll also test both brands of oil to see which offers the best film strength. We'll see which brand flows the best when the oil is extremely cold. Finally, I'm gonna use the Kirtland Synthetic Oil in my own vehicle for a full oil change interval and then send it off to be analyzed by an oil testing lab. Kirtland Signature Full Synthetic SAE 5W30 Motor Oil. Kirtland Signature claims to provide advanced wear protection for extended engine life. We're going to test that. It also claims to control thermal breakdown caused by excessive heat. We're going to test that as well. The Kirtland oil is also Dexos 1 Generation 2 approved. Helps prevent low speed pre-ignition commonly seen in modern turbocharged direct injected gasoline engines. Controls friction and wear better than the latest API SN Plus requirement, especially during cold starts. We're going to test that. Protects against high temperature shearing to maximize oil life and long drain intervals. For use in gasoline, flex fuel, or gasoline electric vehicles requiring SAE 5W30, API SN Plus, SN, SL, and ILSAC GF5, GF4, or previous standards. So who blends the oil for Kirtland Signature? Warren Distribution out of Omaha, Nebraska. We'll compare the Kirtland Signature Oil against the SuperTech Full Synthetic 5W30 Motor Oil. Superior protection. It claims better fuel economy. Superior wear protection. Cleaner engine and excellent performance. Just like the Kirtland brand, the SuperTech is also Generation 1 Dexos 2 approved. The SuperTech gives itself three stars for reduced engine wear. We'll test that. Three stars for combat sludge and deposits. Extreme temperature protection, three stars. It meets API SN Plus, SN, SM, SL, and ILSAC GF5 or GF4. But the SuperTech and the Kirtland claim that their oil does a great job at providing resistance to thermal breakdown when exposed to heat. Are one of these brands really that much better than the other or are both brands pretty much the same? We're gonna find out in the first test. We'll first measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers, then crank up the heat to 420 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. I'll also monitor the temperature of both oils throughout the test to make sure that they are very close to the same temperature at all times. Both oils will experience an equal amount of time on each burner. So why this test? The NOAC Volatility Test is an American Society for Testing and Materials test which exposes the oil to a lot more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. At the end of this test, we'll find out how much evaporation has occurred with each brand. Then we'll be using the cooked oil for additional testing to see which oil is really Really the best. Both oils appear to be doing very good on this test and the amount of vapors coming from each container seems to be very typical for a full synthetic 5W30 motor oil. Throughout the test, both oils appear to be producing about the same amount of vapor, but there's only one way to know for sure. The two hour test is just finished. So I'm gonna go take the oil off the burners and when we come back, we'll measure each oil to see which one experienced the least amount of evaporative loss. The SuperTech container started off at 411 grams and now weighs. 403.33. That's a loss of 7.67 grams. The Kirtland brand started off at 430.14 and now weighs 422.45. That's a loss of 7.69 grams. Wow, that one's almost too close to call. With SuperTech winning by such a small margin, I'm gonna call this one a tie. We definitely wanna compare cold oil flow performance of both the new and the cooked oils for each brand and we'll do that near the end of the video. To ensure accurate test results, we'll go ahead and place the oil in a freezer that set the 40 bucks below zero Fahrenheit until tomorrow when we test the cold oil flow of both brands. In the next test, we'll be comparing the lubricity or the film strength of each brand. We'll begin by adding 40 milliliters of oil that's been exposed to heat into the test cups. The test will last right at 10 minutes. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine which oil provides the best film strength. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll provide us with some great information.
The SuperTech bearing is to the left and the Kirtland bearing is to the right. The wear scar at each bearing is virtually identical, extremely close. Definitely the closest comparison I've seen in a long time with virtually a tie. Kirtland did just extremely narrowly edge out the SuperTech bearing. Two hundred forty-nine thousand four hundred two miles on the Suburban. So what I'm gonna do is change out the oil with the Kirtland, and we'll come back in about six to eight weeks and do an oil change, send it off to an oil testing lab, and then see how the oil performed. When it comes to selecting a high quality motor oil, cold oil performance is a huge factor. Oil that flows easily when it's cold will begin lubricating the moving parts of an engine sooner than an oil that doesn't flow very well at all. Let's kick off the cold oil flow test and we'll see which oil flows the best when it's cold. New Kirkland Lane 1, Cook Kirkland Lane 2, Cook Supertech Lane 3, and New Supertech Lane 4. And both oils are out of the gate at nearly the same time. This could be the closest race we've ever seen as both oils brought their A game and their best racing slicks for this showdown. Team Supertech seems to have an extremely small lead over Kirkland, but Kirkland is still very much in this race. The cooked oils for both brands are slightly faster than the new oils, but performing very close to the new standard. As both oils head down the final stretch, it's Supertech in a very narrow lead over Kirkland. And the cooked Supertech crosses the finish line first, then the cooked Kirkland in second. New Supertech third, and new Kirkland fourth. So Team Supertech barely edges out Kirkland for the victory, and definitely the closest race we've ever seen. Very impressive job by both brands. I last changed the oil at 249,402 miles. It now has 253,694, which is almost 4,300 miles. I'm going to collect the oil sample that I'll be sending off to the oil testing lab about midway through the drain cycle. I'm going to go ahead and cut open this oil filter so we can take a look inside for wear metals or other forms of contamination caught up in the filter media. Using a vise to squeeze the oil out of the filter media will really help us get a good look at the debris and wear metals. There aren't any big chunks in this oil filter, so I'm going to take a look at this under the microscope. Not visible to the eye, I've got a piece of debris that I pulled out of this filter on the very tip of this Mohs hardness tester. It's a very sharp tip, but under microscope it actually doesn't look too sharp. Most car oil filters will collect particles 20 microns in size or larger. That little particle we just looked at is somewhere around 30 microns. A human hair is around 75 microns. There doesn't appear to be too much contamination in the oil filter media. Now that all the local testing is finished and we've collected the used oil sample from the Suburban, I'll package and ship the new and the used oil samples to an independent oil lab that can provide us with a lot of great information on the oil's anti-wear additive package, detergent and dispersant content, as well as the oil's total base number, or the ability of the oil to resist becoming acidic over time. I always shake oil containers before sending off samples for testing since part of the additive package may actually fall out of suspension and settle at the bottom of the container. And the oil lab test Test reports are back and the results are very interesting. Let's first compare the new oil samples against each other to see how their oil packages compare and then we'll look at how well the used oil held up over an oil change interval. Supertech on the left and Kirtland is on the right. Both brands seem to be nearly identical. Both have between 65 and 75 parts per million of molly which is a great anti-wear additive. Both have nearly the same amount of boron, calcium, and magnesium which are detergents and dispersants. The Kirtland oil does have a slightly higher level of phosphorus and zinc but that's most likely due to normal variation. The viscosity of both brands is very close and the flash point is the same at 430 degrees Fahrenheit. The TBN, which is the oil's ability to resist becoming acidic or corrosive, is very close for each brand at around 6.5 to 7.4.
So just how well did the Kirtland brand protect the Chevrolet Suburban from engine wear? The new oil analysis is on the left and the used oil analysis is on the right. If used oil has aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, or tin in it, those are typically a sign of engine wear. Of course, if an engine is getting used, there's going to be some wear and those elements are likely to be present. I previously used a product called Engine Restore, which has copper and lead as ingredients. This caused the copper and lead levels to be slightly higher than normal. Aluminum, chromium, and iron are also indicators of engine wear and they are well within the normal range. The levels of detergents, dispersants, and anti-wear additives is down slightly compared to new oil, which is normal. At 58, the viscosity of the oil stayed within the normal range, which is between 56 and 63. The flash point is still within the normal range. The TBN is still in excellent shape at 2.7, so the oil is still good for use and could have been used even longer. So back to the original question, can you trust the Kirkland brand motor oil in your vehicle or is it gonna cause damage? My opinion is that it's a very good motor oil, especially when you consider the value price of $12.50. Based upon looking at the oil analysis results for all three brands, that is Amazon Basics, Supertech, and Kirkland, they're all from Warren Distribution, and I believe they're all the exact same motor oil with just a different type of container. All my video ideas, including this one, come from viewers and not from corporations. There isn't any sponsored content on this channel, and I want to keep it that way. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.